Back to Swift Guitar Lessons. Today I'm sharing with you probably one of the most beautiful love songs of all time. This is the 1947 classic by Edith Piaf, La Vie en Rose. Let's get started. Okay, we have a close look at the fretboard, and we're getting started breaking down what is basically my own interpretation of the tune. Ordinarily I'd play it in the key of D, but today I've decided to pressure my vocal just a bit and try singing it here in the key of E by putting a capo on the second fret. I'm gonna get started showing you the intro. We'll break down the chords that are in it and also the melody line. Okay, so the chords needed there are D major, an F sharp minor 7, kind of played here in a jazz position. We'll also be needing a G major chord, which doesn't really require the pinky being down. Actually sounds very nice with that open E string. An E minor, and uh, that could also be an E minor 7 chord if you like. An A7, and then we'll be returning back to the root. Okay, now that you have those basic chords down, let's take a look at how many beats we have for each of them. The D major chord will have four beats. One, two, three, four. The F sharp minor gets the same. One, two, three, four. The G major chord, one, two, three, four. And the E minor and A7 will get half that value. One, two, three, Okay, now that we have an idea of how the chord progression is flowing, we can start putting in the melody line. Now, we're gonna break this up into four different sections. Section number one will sound like this. That's all. All right, so that was a D major chord strumming down to the B string, probably going from D string down to B. And if you can do it my style, a hybrid style, you're gonna strum, but your last note in that strum will be the middle finger plucking just like that, it has to be timed correctly. Next we're gonna have two O on the B string to the second fret of the G string. So far we have. After that we're gonna have the third fret hammering up to the fourth fret of the D string. Then I'm gonna leave my first finger down on the G string, but put my middle finger on the third fret of the uh, B string, so I have little piece of that D major chord. So it would sound like this. My first finger stays, but this finger goes onto the B string, and we have. That's gonna get us into our next part. All right, 
right, so there I had my F sharp minor chord, F sharp minor seven, and I'm gonna strum down the same thing though. I'm gonna have my middle finger pluck that last note. So I'm strumming from the E string down to the B string. Bear in mind, the A string is muted, so we're not gonna hear that. Then I'm gonna have open uh, B string, second fret G string, and then I'm not gonna really spend any time here on the second fret of the D string. I'm just gonna slide up to the fourth fret. So far we have. My middle finger, or sorry, my ring finger will play then the fifth fret of the A string. And my pinky will grab the sixth fret relative to the capo of the G string. going on to part number three. Okay, so so far we have part number one with the D chord. Part number two with the F sharp minor. And then that's gonna bring us to part number three. Sounds like this. All right, so that was my G major chord. I'm not gonna have my pinky down at all. I'm just gonna pluck the E string, B string, and G string using my hybrid picking technique. Kind of pinching. So that way I'm striking the E string with the pick, but my middle finger is working kind of like a paintbrush, hitting the B and G string in a swooping kind of motion. All right, so that's gonna be like, then that's followed by a slide up to the second fret of the G string. The open G string, and then the D string follows that. So then that first little section of it will sound like this. After that, we'll have the third fret of the E string, which has been held down this entire time. Very quickly, right, we're gonna get to that before sliding up to the second fret of the B string. And then we have part number four, an E minor seven. I might strum through to the B string and then grab the high E string before going to A7. But you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna add in just one little extra trick. I don't do this every time. But a nice little color there, grabbing the second fret of the high E string. Relative to the capo, that is. So then I just strum through the A7 chord all the way down, but grabbed the high E string second fret with my middle finger. And then opening up the high E string for just a little bit of a melody line there. You put all those four parts together and it sounds like this. So that's how you play the intro part, but it's also the exact same thing that's gonna be going on in our verse. Now you might wanna pick and choose where you throw in the melody lines underneath of your vocal. You don't have to do anything at all, really, besides uh, strum the chords. Hold me close and hold me fast. This magic spell you cast. This is la violence. Okay, so with the melody line, it would sound like this. Hold me close and hold I usually definitely do it on the D chord, it sounds very nice. Fast, this magic spell you cast. I usually leave it pretty plain over the G chord. This is La Vianos. And then, uh, that's kind of an attempt, uh, I should probably mention, just to kind of um, sweeten up certain spots so that way there is emphasis in different areas of the composition. Like, I don't want to throw in the melody lines and the special tricks in every single lyric throughout the song because then it's not gonna really stick out, nothing's gonna stand out that way. All right, so maybe we'll start off picking through the melody line and singing at the same time, but then keep some of the other sections plain. You're just gonna um, rely on your sense of dynamics to dictate where you'll be putting in those special tricks. All right, moving into section number two of the verse. Okay, moving on to the second part of the verse. This part's gonna sound like this. When you kiss me, heaven sighs, 
And though I close my eyes, I see la fianos. Okay, so that's gonna be an E minor chord for four beats. A7, one, and two, and three, and four. Then E minor seven for two beats. One, two, A7, three, four, and then D major chord, one, two, three, Okay, moving on to the third section of our verse. We're gonna start with the D major chord. It's gonna sound like this. When you press me to your heart, I'm in a world apart, a world where roses bloom. Okay, so we have a lot of tricks that we could throw in here, but generally what we have is a D major chord. Two, three, four. You could do an F sharp minor seven, but I actually prefer just a straight F sharp minor chord. Bar in the second fret and putting your third and fourth fingers on the uh, fourth fret relative to the capo of the A and D string. Like that. So we have D, two, three, four, F sharp minor. And then I throw in a D7 here. This is probably different than what you'll see in a lot of different versions. Two, three, four, and then the G major chord. Okay, so D, F sharp minor, D7, G. On the D chord, you could throw in a little bit more of the melody. When you press me, sometimes I just hang right there in vibrato, to your heart, and throw in the F sharp minor. Occasionally, you might see me kind of do a walk up, something like that, uh, going from the E string open, first fret, and then strumming through the F sharp minor chord. That would sound like this. Very classy, very cool way of doing it. I'm in a world apart, a world where roses bloom. Now, if you're worried about your strumming pattern, really all I'm doing is eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. If I wanted to add in a little bit of percussion, I could. One and two and three and four and. On the two and four beat, right? That's the rule. All right, so, so far we have section one of the verse. We have section two and section three. Now we're gonna move on to the kind of the crescendo of the song. Okay, moving on to section four of the tune. This is where things are really going to start to build and you're gonna be stretching your vocal cords a little bit. We have the G major chord starting us out. It's gonna sound like this. And when you speak, angels sing from above. Little trick there. Everyday words seem to turn into love. All right, so we have a G major chord. One, two, three, four. Again, the pinky's not necessary. An F sharp minor bar chord, but actually I prefer F sharp minor with the 11 in there. Open B string. We're not barring anymore. The first finger is just here on the second fret of the G string. Now we have this great sound. Strumming from the A string down. And when you speak, angels, Sing from above. We can get more melody into there by going, uh, highlight the melody line by going E string, then put your middle finger on the third fret of the B string, and then play the second fret of the G string. So now I have G chord without the pinky. And when you speak, angels. Strum that chord once. Hit the high E string just one extra time after strumming the third fret of the B string, and then we have a nice little trick there just to highlight the vocal melody. All right, that gets us back into the E minor chord. Everyday words seem to just, you know, uh, it's pretty laid back strumming. One, you can hit the, the strings with the little chuck if you want. One, two, three, four. Throw in the minor seven now. The pinky goes to the third fret of the B string. And then just strum the A7 chord one time, let it cliffhang. Love song. It's very romantic. All right, that whole section's gonna sound like this G chord, F sharp minor. All right, then we have the E minor chord. Two, three, four, E minor seven. Two beats, and then the A7 chord. One long strum, let it ring out for as long as you like. 
Okay, moving into the fifth and final section. It's gonna be a play on part number three, but we're just gonna have a different tag at the end. Okay, so this part, we'll start off with the D major chord. Give your heart and soul to me, and life will always be la via All right, so, um, like I said, just like part number three, but we're just gonna be um, bringing back the title of the tune right there at the end, um, and kind of packaging it up a little bit, resolving, right? So we have the D major chord, one, two, three, four. We could do the melody too. One, vibrato there on the G string like we did in part three. Then F sharp minor, two, three, four. The E minor chord, one, two. Then A7, one, two. And then D major chord, I like to go right back into my intro from here. so forth. All right, after reprising your intro, we're gonna go back into section number four, that big crescendo part. Except I'm gonna throw in a few extra tricks this time around and change up the chord progression with a few chord alternatives. So this is what it's gonna sound like. I got my E minor seven chord instead of the G. It's gonna be. Really pulling out the melody there. All right, so I have my E minor seven chord or E minor strumming down actually first on the E minor chord. Picking that E string twice with the strum first, then playing the third fret of the B string, our, our minor seven. Then I'm gonna do the same thing over a G chord, but this time I'm playing it with my middle finger on top, just like that. So we have E minor, add in the dominant seven. Now the G chord. Then we're going to go to that F sharp minor 11 chord. Just like we did earlier in the song. So E minor, pinky grabs the third fret of the B string. G chord, grab that same note with, now with the ring finger. And then we have the F sharp minor 11. Grab that same note again with the middle finger and then grab the second fret of the G string. From there, we're just gonna go back into the E minor chord. Every day words seem to turn into love songs. All right, and then we're gonna cliffhang again a little bit, let it ring before finishing up the tune. Give your heart and soul to me and life will always be la vie rose. Reprising part number five. All right, everyone, thanks so much for checking out this lesson on la vie rose. I hope you enjoyed it. I got plenty more videos coming up, as you know, so keep checking back. Please subscribe. I am Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.